Yes. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my presentation. So the title of my presentation is Extensions of CDCL Branching Heuristics by Exploration During Config Depression. Uh, this is a joint work with my supervisors, Martin Mueller and Jia Yu. So without uh, talking much uh, about the introduction, I will jump into uh, the meat of the matter. So <laughs> Boolean satisfiability set, uh, as you know, it's a, it is a fundamental problem in computing science. Uh, it has profound implication in computational complexity, logic, and uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, given a set formula of Boolean variables, the task of set solving is to determine an assignment of the variables that satisfies that formula, uh, if such assignments exist. Otherwise, uh, just to report uh, that uh, no, th there is no such so uh, th there is no solution exist uh, for that problem. Uh, uh, this toy example over here shows how a set solver works. Uh, given a formula f of these three Boolean variables, if you give that formula into a set solver, the set solver will simply say that under these assignments, uh, the formula is satisfiable. This toy example over here is very easy, but in general, set is not that easy. In fact, we have uh, very established uh, uh, theoretical results that shows that set solving is NP complete. That means set is hard in general, and it is intractable in general. However, modern set solvers, such as conflict detected clause learning, CDCL, or CDCL has many real world applications, uh, such as uh, it has applic uh, good applications in hardware design verification, software testing, uh, encryption, planning, and theorem proving. The reason that set solver has found applications in this domain uh, is that uh, CDCL is highly scalable. That means it is able to solve large formulas consisting of millions of variables and clauses. Uh, one uh, hypothesis is there to uh, explain that this uh, surprising efficiency of CDCL search solver is that uh, CDCL search solver exploits uh, the problem structures uh, of, uh, the, uh, of the problems that, coming, that are coming from these domains. Uh, so the major contribution of this work are these four. Uh, the first contribution is uh, we have an empirical investigation of the CDCL set solving process to obtain insights on its conflict generation patterns. And the, our investigation has identified a pathological phase in CDCL search. Uh, we have, as a contribution to, we have a CDCL algorithm extension based on the uh, obtained insights that employs random exploration in a novel way. And we have also performed uh, an extensive evaluation of our algorithm. And we also have performed uh, analysis of the results to reveal further insights on the algorithm. So next two slides will explain some background, uh, present some background uh, which are uh, required to understand the talk. I hope, uh, I think like everyone in this room has these backgrounds, but just uh, I'm just giving, uh, uh, giving a touch uh, on this uh, Two slides. So a search solver uh, uses a uh, backjumping tree search to determine satisfiability. So given a problem, it just perform a tree search. Uh, two major components of uh, search solver, CDC search solver is uh, branching and propagation, where branching is uh, the operation that selects a free variable and assigns a Boolean value to it. And propagation is just the uh, uh, propagation of the logical consequences of those uh, of that decision that, that, that the solver just made. So in CDCL set solver, in usual uh, in its initial operation, uh, branching is followed by propagation. But in, in, in many cases, uh, uh, while doing the propagation, uh, a situation called conflict may occur. Uh, conflict is a situation where a clause cannot, cannot be satisfied with respect to the current variable assignment stack. Uh, once a conflict occurs, the CDCL set solver uh, calls a component called conflict analysis, which outputs two important uh, piece of uh, information. One is a learn clause and, uh, and, and a back jumping level. So a learn clause uh, 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 usually prunes the search space for the solver in the future. So this is very important for the CDCL search solvers. So <clears throat> once a, a clause is learned, a back jumping level is computed from that learn clause 
and, and the solver propagate uh, 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 the solver uh, performs a propagation from that learn clause uh, without making a further decision and the search continues from there during uh, execution of a uh, of a series of the solver that solver uh, performs uh, many uh, restarts uh, where it abandons the current current partial assignments assignment and uh, it uh, the search just starts from the scratch <clears throat> um, so for um, CDCL, conflict generation at a fast rate is very crucial. That's because conflict, uh, without conflict, we cannot learn a clause. And without learning, we cannot prune the search space. And without pruning the search space, we cannot solve the problem faster. So uh, getting conflicts at a fast rate is very crucial for CDCL search solvers. And um, CDCL branching heuristics are, in fact, very conflict greedy. For example, uh, we uh, the, uh, the state of the art heuristics uh, such as V-seeds or variable state independent decaying sum and learning rate based or LRB, uh, both are based on look back principle and they uh, tend to prioritize selection of uh, variables uh, which are seen in the recent conflicts. The intuition behind these heuristics are that um, this uh, such selection uh, will generate more conflicts if they are selected uh, uh, if they're selected uh, uh, right now, and they will uh, pr uh, they will uh, create more conflicts uh, in the future. So, <clears throat> for our work, we have uh, uh, developed uh, two uh, novel notions. Uh, the first one is conflict depression, uh, where a sequence of one or more consecutive decisions doesn't generate any conflict, and the dual of this conflict depression is conflict burst, where uh, the sequence of one or more consecutive decisions generates uh, generate uh, at least one conflict. Uh, this uh, figure over here shows um, shows uh, a sequence of decisions where uh, each number shows number of conflicts generated in that particular decision. So in this figure, we can see we have uh, three conflict depression phases uh, marked in red color. Uh, that starts with decision number two, and uh, the first one starts with decision number two and ends at decision number five. And we have two more conflict depression phases marked in red. And we have three uh, conflict burst phases as well, uh, where the first one starts at one, and uh, the, the second one starts at sixth, and so on. So uh, the first conflict depression phase has length of four, because at uh, for four consecutive decisions, it doesn't generate any conflict. And the <clears throat> second uh, conflict burst phases of length uh, as length three. So it starts from here and ends at here. So these are, uh, this figure illustrates uh, the conflict depression phases and conflict burst phases. Uh, we have uh, defined two other measures, uh, three other measures. Just uh, a, quick, a quick question of clarification. What does it mean for a decision to create more than one conflict? Uh, so, uh, sorry, a quick just explain what does it mean for one decision to make more than one conflict? Oh, okay, uh, so um, so CDC says over learns a clause, and uh, when it learns a clause, uh, it uh, propagates uh, from that learn clause uh, without making further decision. So in within a decision, we can have more than one conflict. I see. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> um, so the measures are. Uh, decision rate, uh, number of decisions per restart, and we have CD phase rate, number of CD phases per restart, and we have average CD phase length, uh, which is the uh, average of the CD phase length over a run of a solver. So the first contribution is a, a series of empirical insights. Uh, to get those empirical insights, we studied CD and briefly CD phases, uh, with v seats and LRB, uh, the, the two most uh, state-of-the-art heuristics for CDCL. Uh, and we used CDCL set solver glucose uh, that uses uh, v seats exclusively. And uh, we used uh, Maple Comes PS, pure LRB, which uses LRB exclusively. And we have used uh, 750 main track instances from set competition 2017 and 18. With a, uh, for each of the instances, we have a, a 
time a uh, timeout per instance of uh, of, uh, of five thousand seconds per instance. And after uh, we pull all the data and analyze, uh, we have uh, some interesting observations, which are these. Uh, number one is uh, CD phases occur frequently with V seeds and LRB. Uh, so the left figure corresponds to the uh, heuristic V seeds, and uh, the right, right figure corresponds to the heuristics LRB. Uh, I will focus on the uh, V seeds, and uh, as because uh, we have similar observations in both of the heuristics. So the left figure for visits, and in this figure, we are drawing three measures. Uh, the blue line over here are for average CD phase length for each of these instances. And the orange uh, uh, dots here are plotting, are plotting uh, a CD, CD phase rate. And, uh, and the yellow uh, dots here are plotting a decision rate. So as you can see, uh, when the instances are drawn, uh, plotted, uh, uh, in, in, in the increasing order of uh, average city phase length, uh, we can see that uh, the, the uh, this, uh, decision rates are really high when plotted in log scale, as well as a city phase are uh, also high. So they are not as high as decision rate, but they are high, they are, they are quite high. So this observation uh, is uh, also, also hold for the LRB, as you can see in the right figure. And Solomon, uh, these, uh, can you remind yeah. us what CD phase rate is again? Uh, CD phase rate is uh, c number of CD phases per restart. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so these observations has led, led us uh, to conclude that CD phases occur frequently with both of the heuristics. Uh, the second observation is that for many instances, average CD phase length are high with both of the heuristics, V6 and RB. <clears throat> so again, I will uh, uh, focus on uh, one, only one of these two pictures, uh, where the left one is uh, uh, left one corresponds to V6 and uh, uh, right one corresponds to LRB. Uh, and in these two figures, uh, we have a, we have distributed those 750 instances into 25 bins, uh, and we have the distribution is by a very CD phase length of those instances. So a, an instance is put into a bin if uh, the average CD phase length of that instance uh, uh, falls within the range that is, uh, that is shown in the top of each bin. So for example, uh, for the first bin, the average CD phase length of each of these uh, 260 instances falls between two and three. And, uh, and uh, every bin has the, the same, uh, same characteristics. So as you can see here, uh, uh, a, good, a good majority of the instances has a very short CD phase length, which is between two and three. However, there are many instances for which we have uh, very high CD phase length. For example, the, uh, the, the distribution is heavy tailed as the last bin, as you can see here, uh, has about uh, 70 instances with uh, a very CD phase length of 25 uh, and more. So, uh, in general, uh, we can have instances with uh, more, uh, with, with very high CD phase length. So we have similar observations in here. So uh, uh, CD phase are uh, a real thing for CD, uh, uh, CD CSR solving. As, a, uh, as observation number three, we have uh, uh, observations on burst of conflict generation. For both of the heuristics on average, you have observed that only 25% of, of the decisions produce at least one conflict. However, as uh, uh, I, was uh, I was telling earlier, uh, one decision can uh, uh, lead to more than one conflict. Uh, and we also have found out how many of them uh, that, uh, produce more than one conflict. Uh, all of the uh, conflict produce, producing decisions, about 61% 61 61 produce more than one conflict. So <clears throat> uh, to conclude uh, our observation on this, uh, on this data, uh, we have this uh, statement, uh, conflict burst phases are short, but it is conflict in, uh, intense. That is many conflicts are within gen uh, generated within a short span of uh, consecutive decisions. So 
We summarize our empirical observation uh, in this uh, one sentence. Uh, the typical search behavior of CDCL contains shorter but conflict in intense conflict burst phases followed by longer conflict depression phases where the search is unable to find uh, any conflicts. So uh, we have CD phases uh, uh, where the search doesn't find any uh, uh, find any conflict, and it indicates that our uh, best known uh, heuristics uh, doesn't find uh, uh, are, are very are, in, are ineffective uh, in, during the CD phases. So we ask these questions: uh, Can we do better in the CD phase? Uh, or like, uh, can we do some variable re-ranking? And these questions, have answering uh, the, our effort to answer these questions has led us to the formulation and of an exploration-based CDCL framework named XSET. So the main idea of XSET is um, that emit a substantial CD phase, uh, which is a big CD phase, uh, with non-zero probability, we perform exploration episodes to identify conflict-friendly variables where uh, an ex exploration episode uh, is a fixed number of random walks uh, with a fixed number of steps per walk. And performing the goal of uh, performing exploration is uh, to find conflict amid a city phase. Perhaps this uh, figure over here and the picture over here explains uh, how the um, explains best how the uh, ex set work. So uh, in the cells over here, uh, in the, in the uh, consecutive cells over here, you can see uh, uh, some sequence of decisions where the green cells corresponds to conflict burst phase, where the search finds at least one conflict. And the black uh, cells over here shows conflict depression uh, decisions in a conflict depression phase where the search doesn't find any conflict. So um, starting from the sec uh, D, uh, decision D plus two, we have a long uh, conflict uh, depression phase and at D plus eight, the search uh, decides to trigger an exploration episode. The tree over here shows uh, a, an, a, an instance of an uh, exploration episode where uh, the exploration episode takes uh, three, uh, uh, three step, random steps per walk, and it has three walks. So each random step over here, in, shown in blue dots, uh, is consists of a selection of a random variable, uh, uh, selection uh, selection of a variable at random, and an assignment of a uh, assignment of a polarity uh, to that variable. And uh, in that way, uh, we go up to level three, or uh, we go up to the the point where we find a conflict. So the goal is to identify variable where uh, we we can have uh, more uh, we can have a uh, we can we can we can identify variables with conflict and this sort of random walk is inspired uh, from a monte carlo random walks mrw which was uh, uh, invented in in the context of deterministic planning so in this uh, particular exploration episode we have uh, only the second walk that is conflict reaching so how do we use that um, the knowledge we got from exploration? Uh, we reward variables in a conflict reaching work by assigning some bonus. So for example, uh, in the second work, only uh, the variable X and uh, Y will get some bonus and other variables in other works will not get any bonus because the other works are not conflict reaching. Uh, so in here, X and Y will, uh, in the second work, will receive some, receive some bonus. And we co we uh, the, we compute the bonus uh, based on the quality of the conflict, uh, quality of the learn clause that the conflict has generated. So, for example, we have considered LBD as a conflict quality in here. And uh, while we are while we compute uh, the bonus, uh, we give largest bonus, which are uh, closer to the uh, uh, to the uh, to the conflict. Uh, for example, in here, y is closer to the conflict so why will get the maximum bonus most of the bon uh, like larger bonus than uh, x which is further away from that conflict and the bonus decays exponentially with the distance from the conflicts and this is modeled after uh, temporal credit assignment uh, as studied in reinforcement learning in x set we call this bonus as exploration score 
Uh, so the branch, how do you do branching in XPSET? Uh, we have extended VSITs and LRB, uh, where we add the exploration score of VSITs uh, with the current activity, uh, uh, current VC score. And we also add LRB score with exploration score for LRB. And while we do the branching, XPSET just select that variable which maximizes their combined score. Uh, uh, which combines visits and, uh, and the heuristic score and exploration scores. So we have performed, uh, performed an extensive empirical evaluation of the uh, of our XPSET approach. Uh, we have implemented XPSET on top of these five state-of-the-art uh, set solvers. Uh, and we have uh, 11 XPSET solver, depending on how we combine uh, our extended heuristics. Uh, so four, uh, we have four X visits, uh, uh, four extra solver that employs X visits exclusively, and we have four X PLRB solver that uh, employs uh, uh, X PLRB exclusively, and we have uh, three uh, solvers uh, that uh, employ a combination of X visits and X PLRB. And for, as a test set, we have two test sets. Um, uh, the first one is the competition benchmark, uh, which is 750 main track instances from uh, set competition uh, uh, 2017 and 2018 with a timeout of 5,000 uh, seconds. And uh, the second benchmark, we have uh, very hard uh, 58 set coin benchmark instances with a timeout of 10 hours. So these are the results uh, with the 4x VC extension. Uh, the results are actually uh, good to strong. Uh, for these solvers, uh, the column, the second column over here shows so, uh, the number of instances solved by the baseline, and the second column, uh, uh, third column shows uh, the number of instances solved by our extensions, and the uh, the fourth column uh, shows uh, the part two score decrement, which uh, reflects the overall performance of the systems. <clears throat> so. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the best performing uh, solver is Maple.com SPS. It solves 16 more instances, which is significant. It is a strong gain in terms of uh, set competitions. And we have uh, uh, good gains with other solvers as well. The minimum is uh, one, which is a fair gain. Uh, however, for uh, set coin benchmarks, we have very strong gains. For example, uh, we have nine more instances solved for Maple.com SPS and Maple CM. Uh, uh, given the number of instance, uh, uh, instance uh, size, like 52, the gains are really strong. Uh, for the expeller, food expeller B extension, we have the similar results. I am not going through uh, the details, but I want to highlight one thing that um, the Maple LRB system, which employs uh, uh, LRB exclusively, uh, the baseline solves zero problems for the set coin benches uh, within the 10 hours of timeout, uh, but our Extension, extension solve 46 out of these 52 problems. So it's like it is solving 90, 90 more than 90% of the problems. <clears throat> uh, for the combined, uh, from the solvers, where it combines both of our extensions, we have similar results. So I'm not going through the details of these uh, results. They are kind of similar. So we have performed some analysis of the solving efficiency with XPSET. Our observations, <clears throat> uh, uh, fall into two categories. Uh, the first one is on conflict efficiency. So our observation is that in general, conflict efficiency, that means uh, the quality of the learn clause uh, has good correlation with solving efficiency. That means for uh, for the instances where XPSET uh, perform really well, they tend to generate high quality learn clause on average. And we have second observation on the average city phase length. So XPSET uh, is, uh, is uh, designed to uh, find conflict at a faster rate during the city phase. That means uh, it is it, it is targeted to uh, uh, escape from the city phase uh, faster. So we try to uh, make it in line. Uh, we, try, we try to find out that uh, uh, whether uh, this uh, intuition holds in practice. So uh, our uh, observation for city phase, average city phase length is this. X set usually reduces uh, average city phase length uh, that means that exploration helps the solver to uh, escape from uh, the CD phase faster. So uh, it is doing what uh, it is, uh, uh, the X set is uh, supposed to do. So in this slide, I'll present a uh, pathological perspective of the CD phase. 
where uh, I will try to uh, connect uh, the city phase with uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the phenomenon of plateau uh, in local search set and uh, deterministic planning. So heurist in heuristic search, uh, search uh, uh, pathological phases are not that rare. Uh, that may, uh, for example, there are uh, plateaus in local search set where uh, consecutive search states uh, search uh, that the uh, uh, consecutive, consecutive states that the search visits uh, 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 those states uh, doesn't uh, doesn't result in decrease in the heuristic value. Uh, and in de deterministic planning, uh, we have plateau regions where heuristic value doesn't improve over uh, uh, over over a long time. So. We have uh, pathological behavior already in heuristic search. So, how about CDCL uh, emitted CD phase? Uh, so, for CDCL, different heuristic values uh, are uh, and the, the, the different variables has different heuristic values. That means state uh, uh, state uh, uh, that search is visiting during a CD phase uh, have different heuristic values. However, none of these states are conflict reaching. That means on the hindsight. Uh, you can have uh, uh, you can uh, you can tell that uh, the CDCL actions of the uh, search is resulting the uh, resulting into same depressing outcome, and in that sense we can uh, uh, connect the lack of progress in CDCL emitted CD phase uh, as if it is uh, to to the lack of progress in uh, LS in plateau region, and based on this uh, argument we characterize a CD as a pathological phase for CDCL. So I'll wrap up my uh, talk with uh, conclusion future work. Uh, so I'll summar uh, summarize here uh, my talk. Uh, we have defined uh, concepts of conflict depression and showed that CDCL, uh, leading CDCL branching heuristics frequently undergo uh, through the pathological state of, uh, uh, phase of CD. Uh, uh, and uh, for many instances, it can, uh, the CD, average CD phase length can be high. and uh, and it, the 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 situation can uh, can be really bad uh, as long as, as uh, the, the 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 conflicts are not generated during the city phase. And to combat the city phases, we proposed uh, X set that perform uh, random exploration in set search space, uh, and the X, X set was was designed to overcome the city phases. And we also empirical uh, showed um, uh, showed empirically that. Uh, our method is effective uh, on two set of benchmarks. For future, um, I am interested in identifying underlying reasons that causes the city phases. Uh, my hypothesis is that uh, the onset of the city phases, city phases corresponds to the switch between communities or the sub problems uh, that is hidden in the uh, instance. And we identify, uh, I, I, I'm also interested in identifying characteristics of set domains and that influence the effectiveness of the uh, exploration. And I'm also interested in uh, finding machine learning models, developing machine learning models that can uh, if it, uh, more effectively handle city phases, such as uh, uh, whether the model is useful to predict uh, the onset of a long, long city phase, or uh, we, can we predict a better, a better variable selection amid a city phase that could end the city phase earlier. So finally, uh, some acknowledgements. Uh, this uh, work was uh, funded by uh, NSERC postdoctoral scholarship uh, and Alberta University Graduate Student Scholarship and a discovery NSERC discovery grant from my supervisors. So thank you, and I'll be happy to answer any any further questions. Thank you, Solomon, for a nice talk. Thank you very much. Uh, Moshe has a question. Please go ahead, Moshe. So um, I may be missing missing something very fundamental. But there is a, another heuristic which is really aimed at maximizing conflict, and it's called look ahead heuristics. It's a family of heuristic, look ahead heuristics. Yes. And they are aimed at maximizing conflicts. And I think if you run a solver, a, a look ahead solver, you will see, I predict that you will see a much smaller number of, of, uh, of con conflict depressions. The problem with, with look ahead, it's an expensive heuristic. And that's yes. why generally, unless for a very specific application being abandoned. But perhaps we abandon it uh, too soon. Maybe what we need to do is, is uh, have a parameter which is a small, with a small probability, use look-ahead heuristic. And as 
as we as we have more decision, as we get into a conflict depression, every time we get no conflict for a decision, we raise the probability of using look ahead heuristic. That will be the easiest way to find a mix of a, of a heuristic that are aimed to be very fast and with heuristics such as uh, look ahead that are mac maximize conflicts but are slower. Yes, yes. So um, um, you are absolutely right. Uh, look ahead is expensive, but if we know the right place to execute the look ahead uh, algorithm to find uh, uh, to to uh, to to find an effective heuristics a heuristic heuristic value for the state of the uh, current state. Uh, current state of the solvers, uh, then, then it would be it should, it should be beneficial. So CD phase is the is the place where I'm doing uh, the sort of look at thing uh, which is in which I'm doing in terms of production. Yeah, but I think Solomon uh, Moshe's idea actually is a very nice idea because what he's saying is instead of doing random exploration, can we okay. consider um, calling a, a look ahead a heuristic at that point to determine yes, whether or not uh, to add, add. And I, I think it's a very nice idea that requires further exploration. And then you can yes. compare that with XSAT and of course the traditional solvers, et cetera. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Let's do a deterministic exploration of this idea. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> Certainly. Uh, any other questions, please? So um, I had another question, uh, Solomon. Um, did you, in your work, you showed you know how you use this random exploration, but did you quantify how much time is spent in the random exploration versus? Uh, I mean, so yeah, we are doing the exploration really conservatively. Uh, so I, I, as far as I can remember, uh, it is not above like. Uh, 5% of the solvers run, run time in the worst case. Also, did you observe that the CD phases tend to be more kind of happen with uh, say crypto instances or crafted instances or something of the sort? Um, uh, for the Satcoin benchmarks, the the right. conflicts are, are, are not that uh, frequent. So I would say the GLR value for uh, uh, that uh, particular benchmark is above uh, below 0.1. That means in every 10 decision, it gets a uh, conflict. Right. That's great. So, yeah. So for crypto instance, I think uh, in, uh, like uh, I have observed this only only for the set coin benchmarks, but probably in for uh, crypto instance, this this will hold. Right. Great. Any additional questions? If not, thank you again for a very nice talk. Uh, and we look forward to chatting offline with you and uh, Moshe about the idea. All Thank right, you. so the next speaker is Mislav.